Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Friday Morning Devotions. I am very thankful to spend this time with you. Looking forward to the next few moments, I'm going to share my heart with you because I have some real honest convictions, some real deep convictions, and I want to share those with you concerning success. Now, one of the things that can happen when someone like me shares what they think from the core of their being, it can sound like someone like me has everything together. And the answer to that reality is I do not have everything together. The four principles, the four thoughts, the four ideas, the four guiding things I use for my life are things that I have spent many years kind of discovering about myself. And so as a result of the discovery with God's work, His Holy Spirit, uh, with His Word, through all that discovery time, I have come to the place in time where I feel like I can now, for the first time maybe in, in my entire life, articulate those things to other people because I've had an opportunity to interact with others who hear what I have to say and help me define it. So I tell people I talk for a living, but I don't necessarily always think for a living. That sounds pretty awful if you think about it. But in reality, I am thankful for those who have helped to shape me over the years that I've been involved in doing things for others. Through ministry, through my time in retail, through my time as a trainer, as an individual who did HR, um, all those things that I've done throughout my life, it has been the people around me who have shaped me and helped me shape the, the principles I'm getting ready to share with you today. So let's jump in, and as usual, I have a question for you, and this is a very interesting question. I don't know why it came up in my little bitty brain, but I thought this was really quite intriguing and challenging. It's certainly going to be insightful when you answer this question. So I want you to comment down below and let me know if you had $1 million and you could not keep it, what would you do with it? If you had a million dollars and you could not keep it, what would you do with it? So comment down below. Let me and the whole world know what you would do with that million dollars, okay? Um, so as we're heading into 2023, it seems like we're moving there with the speed of light and uh, breakneck speeds, it seems like, and this unbelievable, can't believe it's happening. I thought it was January 1st, 2022, kind of feeling that many of us may be having right now. So as we jump into 2023, I want to share with you four principles that I believe will make you more successful at life. Now, when I talk about successful, I want to use a disclaimer here. I'm not advocating these four principles will make you rich. I'm not trying to make you believe that these four principles will make you uh, better at your job necessarily, although they could. What I'm really trying to do is get at the core of your being at your belief system and begin to weed out those things which are causing you to not live in the fullness of God's grace. To help you look at the things that you have grasped and you know are true and to use those as anchors for your soul while you do more cleaning. You see, I learn as I go, just like you do. And as I go through, there's more and more things I see that God wants to clean up or change or modify or even transform in my life to make me more like himself. And so these four principles are four principles I believe have made me successful when it comes to walking with Christ. And I think it impacts the way I do things in my job, in my family, in my church, in my service to others. So here we go. Let's jump in. I want to give you these uh, principles, these thoughts, and maybe it will help you to begin to try to find ways that you would consider yourself more successful in life, whether the success comes through money, jobs, or other areas. You see, there's going to come a day when you're going to have to make a decision. It's not going to make a, be a, a good decision. It's not going to be an easy decision. But when you make that decision, you're going to know in the depths of your being, knowing through the work of God's Spirit in your life, knowing through the words that you have read in His Word, uh, and spending time in, his Bible, in the Bible looking at those things, you're going to find yourself saying, it may not be popular, but it's right. And so I think these four principles will help you to make those kind of decisions. Here's number one. God has gifted you with a talent, with a passion, with something that seems to drive your insides. And everyone has this. 
Don't try to cop out of this. You see, when, I, when people hear this, they think of something like, you know, some special athlete or someone who is, you know, a great speaker or someone who does a, a music thing and they think, oh, that's the most talented person. So we think of gifts or we think of talents. We think of those kind of things. Those are talents. Don't get me wrong. But every one of us have a talent, a gift, a passion. And so the first principle you need to know is this. You need to use and develop the gifts and passions that God has given you. And he's given you multiple areas in which that you have talents and passions, I guarantee you. And so if you'll allow him to use those in your life, then you'll find yourself finding more satisfaction. You'll find yourself uh, feeling more fulfilled. And you'll find yourself actually being more effective at living life is to use these passions and these talents. So... If God has given you those, you need to be developing those. And if you have a chance, not everybody has a chance. I've been blessed to have the chance. But if you have an opportunity to use those passions and those talents to make a living, then jump in and take it, even if it only lasts for a short period of time. Take the opportunity to use what God has given you to bless others. And if you can make a living at it, go for it. Now, you can laugh at me, but I want to use a very practical illustration of how every human has a gift or talent and how in the world of all of us big timers that talk about life, in the world of all of us speakers who try to inspire you and motivate you and teach you and transform your life, here's a very straightforward, amazing example from my life as to what it looks like when someone used their talents. Like I said, you can laugh at this story if you want, but a few years ago, we had a sewage leak under our house. I was unaware of it. And then one day I noticed an odor and I thought, what is this odor I have? And so I began looking around the house and I couldn't figure out where it was at. I thought maybe it was a dead animal somewhere. Come to find out the sewage from my house was going underneath my house because of this leak, because of this break that was in the sewer line. And listen, I am so glad that when I called that there was someone who had a talent, a passion, the ability to go underneath my house to find the leak amidst all the smell and to fix it. And I am forever in that man's debt. My plumbing now works correctly because someone who understood how God wired them used their talent to benefit someone else. Now listen, if you think you're better than a plumber, you probably need to stop, look in the mirror, and give yourself a good hard talking to. Because I am telling you, that plumber is on top line, on the top number 10 in my list of people. Because I am telling you, when you have a sewage leak, you have trouble. And if someone can't get you through that trouble, you're going to smell the rest of your life. So listen up. Do not... Put others down because their talent isn't like yours. One last illustration. When I was four years of age, my appendix burst and I had to have emergency surgery. If you think one small thing doesn't make a big impact in your life, remember your appendix. All right? Just remember that. Remember your spleen. Remember those little bitty veins you have and those arteries you have that no one ever sees and you take for granted. Without them, you're dead. That's the way it works. Listen, do not put others down because you think your talent is more important. You who talk and act and have the outside talents, without the heart of it, you're dead. Listen, if you're the heart, take heart because you are more, the most critical part of getting the body of Christ going. Scripture even says that, that the ones, that the talents which are not seen are held in higher esteem. So use your talent, your passion, your energy that comes from God. It's God's design for you. Use it as often as you get the opportunity. And if you can make a living at it, then jump at the opportunity. Secondly, and I know we all have to pay bills, and what I'm getting ready to say is rather, um, I don't know, it feels rather almost oxymoron and sound, oxymoron, uh, moronic uh, sounding. Um, we all have bills to pay, and I know that we have to make money. But listen, here's the second principle. If you make money one of the main things you try to get, then you're going to find yourself always being poor. 
regardless of how much you make on your paycheck. If money is what you're driven by, then you are a poor individual. Amen, brother. That's right. You don't have to say it. I'll pick it up on my own this time. Listen to me. Money does not make you, even though you have to make money. So here's what I want you to know, is that if you make money your pursuit, this is what you're capable of. You're capable of hurting others to get what you want. You are capable of lying and stealing to get the things you think you need. You are capable of compromising your standards and your morals so that you can get something of less value. And you will never live an honest day in your life because you'll always be seeking an emptiness that cannot be satisfied and money will not fill you. Listen, I know I got to have money to pay the bills. I even raise money for a living. And yet money is not the pursuit of life. And it is not my pursuit. I'm thankful I get a paycheck. I work hard for the paycheck. But I am telling you that money cannot be your God and cannot be my God. You will be miserable if that's your aim. Having money isn't the root of all evil. It is the love of it. It is the passion for it. It is the absolute gotta have it inside that makes your heart and soul at odds with God. And so listen up. God has allowed you to make money. Honor him with it and don't make it your God. Thirdly, always, and I mean always, concern yourself with the well-being of others and those around you. This seems counterintuitive, I know, because in a world where we say we are number one, listen, I'm not picking on Burger King, but Burger King says have it your way. God says if you have it your way, you're going to be in some trouble. So listen, God has given you talents he has given you treasures, and you need to use everything about who you are to find a way to serve others and to make others the top of your life and focus. When you're standing in a line at the store, make others your focus. When you're going through a traffic light, make others your focus. When you're sitting with your family, make others your focus. When you are willing to make others your focus, you are willing then to set aside the things that are selfish and find yourself living like your Savior. Listen, as someone who has trusted Christ, you have no other option. He says you are not your own. You are bought with a price. And so you need to understand that your Savior asks you to put others ahead of yourself. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul wrote that in Philippians 2, verses 2 through 4. Do not look out for your own interest only, but look out for the interest of others. And then think of others as better than yourself. That is not popular, especially in this unbelievably fully offended world where we think we're number one. Listen, God created you and created me to be in walking fellowship with each other, to interact with each other and to love each other. And when we do not live that way, we are putting a successful a success principle away from our lives and we are not going to succeed if we're always seeking our own listen it's often called and i've used it thousands of times some of you've heard me use it i call it use do win-win or don't do it that's a phrase i first heard from john maxwell a number of years ago do win-win or don't do it when you do what helps others you do what the savior honors and if you're someone who has not trusted Christ, it should intrigue you when others actually let you be first. You should, it should intrigue you as to wonder why would they let you be first when they could, because they have power, position, put themselves first. This should drive you to look and ask yourself, where does this passion, desire, this talent come from? Listen, even as someone doesn't follow Christ, you can begin now to put others first. I would encourage you to follow Christ. But this principle works everywhere because it's given by a God who created you and he knows how you operate. As the old joke goes, if you don't know what's going on, go get the owner's manual. That's right. God wrote the owner's manual. And then fourth, and I think this is so amazing for me, 
I have benefited from this principle in so many ways. I recently added it to the first three principles that I've shared for what feels like maybe 10 or 15 years, but I've recently added this fourth one. I've been talking about this in so many different settings, and I realize that this is a principle that I actually base every decision of my life upon. And so I've added it to the first three principles. This is my fourth principle. I believe will help you be successful and be honest before God and be who he wants you to be. And that's this simple reality. When you have the privilege and the opportunity to interact with other humans, you should always seek two outcomes. Number one, you should make that other person's life better. To look out for their future and help them reach their best life as often as you can, knowing that when you help others through the seasons of life, that you find a way to get through the seasons of life. Zig Ziglar used to say, if you want to be basically successful, then help other people be successful. That's what he said. And then you will find success. The second outcome is that if you are not the one who can influence that person, in other words, you don't have something to give them, then by golly, you better pay attention and let them put something in your life. Listen, even a broke clock is right twice a day. That's right. So you can even learn something from people who are not quite all together because they can teach you something about life. You need to see that. And so allow that opportunity when you interact with someone else. Never leave someone else's presence without making sure that one of you and potentially, if possible, both of you grow from your opportunity together. And when you do that, you will grow in your relationships. And I believe you'll be the success that God has asked you to be. Even if it bears no money or bears all kinds of money, you'll be able to handle it because you've got the right attitude about other human beings. These four principles are rooted in the behavior of a man who I follow. He's a man who died and no one really got his teaching till after he died. He attracted people, and when they got close to him, he oftentimes repelled them by what he said. He touched thousands of lives and knew that no one was going to stand with him when his last days come, and that no one could touch him in his abilities to change other lives. He was without any need, and yet he came and made himself lean on us, to have his needs met while he was here. He never, despite living in human form, sinned. And he lived a life as an example for you and I. Yes, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And I want you to listen as a murderer describes him, and you'll hear the four principles I've talked about in this passage. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took on a humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow And in heaven and earth and under earth, every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That echoes all four of those principles. And then, knowing you've been asked to live this way, I'm going to ask you, if you would, each day to make a choice. Listen as I share from Max Lucado. It's quiet. It's early. My coffee is hot. The sky is black. The world is still asleep. The day is coming. In a few moments, the day will arrive. It will roar down the track with with the rising of the sun. The stillness of the dawn will be exchanged for the noise of the day. The calm of solitude will be replaced by the pounding pace of the human race. The refuge of the early morning will be invaded by the decisions to be made and deadlines to be met. For the next 12 hours, I will be exposed to the day's demands, and now I must make a choice. Because of Calvary, I'm free to choose, and so I choose. I choose love. No occasion justifies hatred. No injustice warrants bitterness. I choose love. Today, I will love God and what God loves. 
I choose joy. I will invite my God to be the God of my circumstance. I will refuse the temptations to be cynical, the tool of the lazy thinker. I will refuse to see as anything less than human beings, um, being uh, human beings that have been created by God. I will refuse to see any problem as anything less than an opportunity to see God. I choose peace. I will live forgiven, and I will forgive so that I might live. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world. Instead of cursing the one who takes my place, I'll, him by, I'll invite him to do so. Rather than complain that, he, that the wait is too long, I will thank God for a moment to pray. Instead of clean, uh, clenching my fist at the new assignments, I will face them with joy and courage. I choose kindness. I will be kind to the poor, for they are alone. Kind to the rich, for they are afraid. Kind to the unkind, for such is how God has treated me. I choose goodness. I will go without a dollar before I uh, take a dishonest one. I will be overlooked before I will boast. I will confess before I accuse. I choose goodness. I choose faithfulness. Today I will keep my promises. My debtors will re not, not regret their trust. My associates will not question my word. My wife will not question my love. And my children will never fear that their father will not come home. I choose gentleness. Nothing is won by force. I choose to be gentle. If I raise my voice, may it be only in praise. If I clench my fist, may it only be in prayer. And if I make a demand, may it only be of myself. I choose self-control. I am a spiritual being, and after the body is dead, my spirit will soar. I refuse to let what will rot rule the eternal. I choose self-control. I will be drunk only by joy. I will be impassioned only by my faith. I will be influenced only by my God, and I will be taught only by my Christ. I choose self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To these I commit my day, and if I succeed, I will give thanks, and if I fail, I will seek his grace. And then, when this day is done, I will place my head on my pillow and rest. That is from Max Lucado's book, When God Whispers My Name. Before I go, let me just ask you this question. If you had a million dollars and you couldn't keep it, after hearing the four principles, what would you do with it? Comment down below and let me know. Thank you for tuning in today. It's been a little longer than usual, but God's best to you and thank you for hanging in there. God's grace to you and all your family and all that you love as the new year comes. And thank you so much for tuning into Friday Morning Devotions. Share it with your family and friends. Share it on your social media. Share it through email. Let others know they can join you to watch Friday Morning Devotions, Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. God bless. I appreciate you. You have blessed my life in so many ways. I'll never be able to repay you, but I'll always thank God for you. Everybody take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye now.